Hi, this is Steve from Ultraceps T-Shirt Color Separation Software. And today I want to talk about gradients that are done uh, within images, uh, in vector images, in programs such as Illustrator and CorelDRAW, and then that artwork being brought into Photoshop to separate. The problem with that is you're going to wind up with banding in some of your channels. Now here we have, this was a vector image, and I opened it in Photoshop. And let's look at the highlight white channel, and you'll see that there's banding in here, okay? Let's look at the brown channel. You'll see that there's banding in the brown channel as well. The reason for that is these uh, vector programs, such as Illustrator, use a mathematical equation to create gradients. So you kind of kind of get step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, and so on. Whereas a gradient in Photoshop is a true gradient because it's creating it as a raster. It's not using that step wedge type math that Illustrator and CorelDRAW uses. So there's one way around it, and that is generate most of your artwork in Illustrator or CorelDRAW, and then bring it into Photoshop and add your gradients and your tints and your shades, and then separate, and it'll separate perfectly. But if you can't do it, and you're doing a separation on an image that's created with a gradient from Illustrator, and you're getting banding in some of your channels, here's a quick down and dirty way to get around it so at least you can get the job printed. So let's um, take a look at the highlight white channel and you can see there's banding in here. Now you're going to need to select all of the areas, uh, you know, let's say within the eagle's face here to make this adjustment. So, you know, you could do that with your magic wand tool and hitting your shift key. Um, and then once you're done making sure all of that area is selected, make a mask like I did here. So you could just command or uh, command click it or control click it on a Windows computer and uh, make that selection. So let's select that area here uh, by command clicking alpha one and let's select the highlight white channel. Now what we wanna do is we wanna get rid of the gradient. Now a lot of printers will let's say wanna blur it or something like that. Bad move, okay? You definitely don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is we wanna add a little bit of noise to this gradient. So let's go up to filter and let's choose noise, add noise. Let's bring this all the way down to the bottom. Want to make sure the uh, uniform radio button is clicked and we want to start with the smallest amount possible. So let's, well, let's start with five. So if we bring that up to five, you can see we started to get a dither effect. Now let's turn a preview on and off. You can see that gradient star, uh, starting, the, the, well, the banding in the gradient starting to disappear. But it's still not completely gone. So let's bring this up to 10. And now the banding is no longer visible. And let's click OK. And you sort of have, uh, you sort of have the effect of like a, an index channel, but it's not. It's still a grayscale channel, but it contains noise, which got rid of the gradient, OK? So when you print this out the film, you're, this will still half tone. So if you're using 45 or 50 or 55 lines per inch, basically what you're doing is you're half toning a grayscale channel that contains noise and it's gonna print just fine. Now let's also add some noise to this brown channel because we have some gradient here. So let's load the alpha channel and let's go to um, filter, noise, add noise, and make sure you add the same amount of noise to each channel you do this to. Okay, so we want to keep that at 10 and click OK. And now when we turn on the separation, you can see it looks OK. And you kind of have that dithered effect in the brown. And you also have it in the highlight white, but obviously you really can't notice this on screen. Now it's not actually going to print this way. It'll print more or less like a smooth um, halftone. All right, but you're not going to have any of this moiré or interference problems with your mesh. Okay, it's also important, I need uh, important to note that the image that you're adding the noise to, the channel, uh, well, the, the channels you're adding the noise to, the image itself, they would be the same thing, needs to be a high resolution image. So this should be at least 300 DPI. You don't wanna be adding noise to a separation that's done at 100 DPI. It's gonna look horrible. So make sure you're running at uh, you know, a high resolution image of at least 300 DPI. And this will, this will get you out of trouble in a pinch uh, when you're getting banding in some of your channels. Just try to avoid dithering anything that contains hard edges or text or anything like that. Try to mask those areas out 
before adding the, um, the noise to any part of the uh, image that contains that gradient. And that's it. That's how you would uh, fix problematic channels uh, containing gradients which have like that step wedge banding effect uh, after running a separation on it within Adobe Photoshop. Thanks again. See you next time.